designing and 3D printing your own DIY drone, or at least figuring out where to start, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. Today we're going to be talking about designing and building your own DIY drone. This is a series I mentioned a couple videos ago and you all were really interested in it, so I figured it now is a good time to get started. This video specifically, we're not even gonna to be touching the CAD program, we're not gonna to be touching slicers, we're not gonna to be touching parts, we're going to be setting our design requirements. Now this is an important step in any project you're doing, whether it's a project for work or a DIY project. Normally for a DIY project, it's not a really formal process. However, I think for this series, it is important to more directly look at our design requirements and what we're trying to build and make that a bit more of a formal process. Now, you may have seen these drones in the opener, and if you've been a longtime follower, you'll recognize them as being some of my first 3D printed drone project. However, I didn't get my start in 3D printed drones. I got my start using a Flame Wheel F450 kit, basically the same kit that anyone getting into the drone hobby five to eight years ago would have started. Now, the F450 Flame Wheel, the 450 meaning 450 millimeters between the motors, uh, is a very lightweight, very simple kit that is made up of some nylon reinforced plastic arms with heat threaded heat nut inserts, and it uses PCB material for the upper and lower center frame structure. Now those PCBs also act as conductive surfaces called a power distribution board that will distribute power to all of the four motors, the motor controllers, and so on. You don't need to know all that for this, but it's, if you're looking to get your start in your very first drone and you don't want to actually design and 3D print something, make sure to check out those kits. Now, as for the design requirements of our DIY drone, I think it's important if this is your first 3D printing project, first drone project, first drone you've ever flown, we're going to start small, we're going to start simple, and we're going to start lightweight. Something a bit more like this Beta 95X, though I'll bet without the DJI equipment. The forces exerted on a drone this small are very little as long as you're not hitting anything. So I think this is a good place to start. There's not a lot of momentum, so you're not going to end up with a lot of stresses on the arms. There's not a lot of, well, there's not a lot of momentum, so when you hit something, you're less likely to damage something. My first DIY drone was this, and this is actually the first frame, though it's seen a few changes, both manual modifications and reprinted arms. The reason I reprinted the arms a bunch was because this thing's heavy. Uh, obviously, in this form, without all the hardware, it's not very heavy. However, back then, the motor controllers were discreet and they were heavy. They had huge aluminum heat sinks on them because the MOSFETs weren't as efficient. The motors weren't as power dense and they were heavy. The flight controllers were cased with aluminum to reject noise and vibrations, so they were heavy. Technology's come a long way since. Oh, don't even get me started on the cameras. We strapped full-on GoPros or other action cameras to the front of these things and used a discrete video transmitter that in and of itself weighed, you know, 50, 60 grams mounted to the back. There were telemetry radios that weren't integrated. There were your receivers. There were so many parts that you needed a big drone. You couldn't do something this small and tightly integrated. One of the issues I had with this drone is it would snap its own arms mid-flight. You'd go to do a turn or a bank, not even anything super aggressive, and next thing you know, this arm sheared right off and it would dive or fall or otherwise crash in a relatively controlled but not quite manner. These were originally made of wood and I replaced them with aluminum C-channel, which is both lighter, stronger, you know, it can take a hit a bit better, won't snap, it'll bend first. So those were some of the faults with building a bigger drone. Now we can also look into my other drone. This one I actually did a couple of videos on on my channel. If you want to check it out, I'll have some links down below. But I wanted to do a few special things with this. I wanted to use aluminum arms to get rid of the issues of my first drone where I had the arms snapping. I wanted to have a full GPS stack on it so it could be fully autonomous. And I wanted the battery to be integrated into the core so that the battery just slid right through, which would allow it to be modular on the bottom so that you could use this power port and a couple of data pins that I never installed and attach various modifications to the drone, such as gimbal cameras, uh, Wi-Fi pineapples, and so on. And of course, a lot of you know the drone I designed and built that actually got me on Hack 5 in the first place, Project Cuckoo. 
that thing it still has a soft spot in my heart. And I know a lot of you really liked it. And I want to do more with that concept in the future. Uh, however, while the Mark 7 Pineapple is a very great piece of hardware, it's not really conducive to a sleek 5-inch drone like that. So in the future, we're definitely going to be tinkering with that some more. Uh, but we're going to need something a little more the size of this and not quite the size of Project Cuckoo. However, for this video, we're going to keep it simple. We're not messing with GPS. We're not messing with the new DJI FPV equipment. We are going to go somewhat old school, new school, mixing a little bit of everything to make a simple FPV drone. And I know simple and FPV are not normally used in the same sentence, but I also feel it's important to learn to fly a drone manually so that if you have any issues with the GPS, if you have any issues with the flight controller, with loss of control or telemetry, you know how to fly it and recover it in the worst case scenario using acro mode. So that's part of what we're going to be looking at as well. Okay, so let's uh, make a list of our design requirements. We want something small, lightweight. We want something affordable because a lot of you are going to be using this as your first drone beyond one of the little $20 no camera equipped infrared controlled things you can get at the dollar store. So you're almost certainly going to crash it. So we need to keep that in mind as well, replacing parts and doing upgrades and making it accessible so that you can get at all the pieces you need to change. I think we're going to use an integrated flight controller and an integrated motor controller so that we can consolidate as much as possible and minimize our wiring. This will also make, the, make it extremely modular, which is counterintuitive, but with how cheap flight controllers and motor controllers have gotten, replacing a 4-in-1 ESC these days is not a big deal. So we're going to use integrated hardware. We're also going to be using an analog camera and an analog video transmitter, again, to keep costs down and make this a more approachable and accessible drone. And that's really all there is to it. Now, these aren't design requirements in the sense of we're setting very detailed, in-depth, what motors we're using, what hardware we're using. But we're going to figure that out in the next video. We're going to talk through some of the standards, why motors are the way they are, why flight controllers are the size they are. This is just the first steps to get your brain working, to get you thinking about what you might want to build so that you too can design your own Project Cuckoo or your own hack drone and make something with a purpose in mind rather than just flying around your backyard. I think it's also important that we are able to print this drone on a 120 by 120 millimeter printer instead of something massive like the Prusa i3. Well, I say massive, there are much bigger printers out there. That one's only 200 by 200, but it's about the average size. I want to be able to print this on my Monoprice Mini, Select Mini V2, the one I carried around in my van. It ran on solar power, it's super efficient, super affordable. You can find them for under $150 with a little bit of effort. So we're probably gonna make this, again, a three inch drone, a bit more like the Beta 95X, rather than something huge like this. However, thinking about it, I think you could 3D print the center chassis and the arm mounts on the Monoprice Mini. I never actually thought about that. Maybe in the future, we'll have a look at designing a much bigger autonomous platform as well. Let me know if you'd like to see that. But first, let's get the uh, little FPV drone going. I think starting small is important here so that you don't get discouraged from the hobby. It is a very intimidating and information rich and opinion rich hobby. So while I got my start designing much larger drones, I spent a lot of money and a lot of time designing and building and not much time actually flying. So starting with something simple and focusing on the important aspects of the drone design and just learning is how, what we're going to be doing. So in the next video, we're actually going to dive into the various motors, the flight controllers, the standards, uh, the actual design work. And the video after that, we're going to start doing the CAD work. We're going to be designing it from the ground up in Fusion 360. And while it won't be a CAD tutorial, you'll want to learn a few things about extruding, sketching, and so on. I'm going to walk you through step by step where the holes need to be placed, how you place them, and so on. So for some of you, this might be a great first project as long as you can solder. That's the only real skill you need to pick up this project is a little bit of soldering experience. Anyway, I hope you all are going to enjoy this series and I'm excited to continue working on it. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions about hardware that you would like to see used or where we should go with this series, maybe what colors do you want the drone to be, be sure to leave a comment down below. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. 
I can't wait to do more on this drone series. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.